Hello guys, in this video we are going to review the BenQ SW321C Professional Photographer's Monitor. Is this the ultimate photographer's monitor? Well, let's find out. So let's firstly take a look at the things that just jump out and hit you in the face, and that is the pure size of it. This is a 32 inch 4K professional photographer's monitor and that 32 inch in a monitor is big i mean you can you know you can see the physical size of it so that in itself is going to really help you out if you want to look at things bigger you know it's pretty obvious right it's a 4k ultra hd screen which means it's got 3840 pixels along its longest edge okay so let's put that into perspective so if you've got a hd monitor at home that will have 1900 and 20 pixels along its longest edge, where well, this has got 3,840 pixels along its longest edge. So effectively, it's got more pixels in that space, which means that you get to see more detail within your imagery. It's an IPS monitor. Now, basically what that means is that you can view it from lots of different angles and you don't get any color or tonal change. And that is a really, really good thing. So whether you're going to buy, you know, a pro end monitor or not, make sure that it's got IPS technology like this one. The other thing that, um, that hits you with it, it's got what's called an anti-glare um, finish or matte finish. They call it an anti-glare matte finish. Now, all of the BenQ monitors have got that. So when I first read that, I thought, mm, you know, what, what's the big deal? They've already had that before. But they've done something new with this one. And I'll tell you what, the difference is absolutely amazing. The script, it's like looking at a print. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. So that is a real plus point for this monitor. The other thing that's important is, it's, is that it's a 10-bit monitor. Now, what that means is that it's got more graduation through the tonal ranges, okay? So, it, I mean, a really easy way to try and describe it is if you go back years and years, uh, an old monitor would have lots of banding going through the, the tone. So if you had a graduation of blues, for instance, here, like in the sky, you'd get banding in that graduation. Well, the more bits you've got, so this is a 10-bit monitor, the more you've got of them, the less of that banding that you get. And it really has got, it really is smooth, you know, like you're looking at the colors and the way that they blend in together and graduate throughout your picture, really is smooth on this monitor. It also works in Adobe RGB color space, 99% Adobe RGB color space. Now, what that means in an absolute nutshell is you get to see more colors. Normal screens, which are standard RGB, so that would be, well, just your normal monitors, your phones, tablets, and whatever else, they work in standard RGB. This works in Adobe RGB, and basically you get 30% more colors, roughly, and that's mainly in the blues and the greens. It's commonly known as a wider gamut of colors, so that comes in really handy, obviously, when you're editing photography. The more colors you see, the more accurate it's going to be when it is reproduced in print. It also comes with its own hardware calibration. Now, so every monitor that you get, if you're doing photography, editing in any way on any monitor, you should really calibrate your screen, okay? Well, the difference is this one comes with hardware calibration, which means the calibration is done within the monitor, not on the computer and via your graphics card, okay? And again, that can help with, you know, really fine detail if you are going to be printing your images. So what we've got here is a high quality, big professional photographer's monitor, and it comes with that type of price tag as well. This is currently retailing in the UK at about £1,600, which is a lot of money for a monitor, I know. This is not for someone who, you know, is playing around with photography at the weekends. This is a pro-end monitor. 
So now let's talk about some of the features that come with it and, and some of the accessories that come with it. The first one is one of these, a shading hood. Now, if you've never used a shading hood on a monitor, I can tell you now, you don't know what you're missing. It's an absolutely brilliant thing to get. And these are obviously high quality. They come with this matte velvet stuff on the inside and it just helps reduce the glare on the screen and it makes your imagery look more accurate. You know, it makes it look more real life. There's no glare or any sort of light coming off of the screen which is going to obscure the picture behind it okay so if you haven't got a shading hood for your monitor i certainly recommend that you get one the next thing that it comes with is this thing here which is called a hot puck key and basically what it does it enables you to switch through different color spaces very quickly and it enables you to do things like brighten up the screen very quickly as well and get into the uh, monitor settings so for instance i can press number two here and it will go into a standard rgb color space i can click number one and it will go back to the adobe rgb color space i can click number three and it will go into its black and white color space, which we'll come to in a minute. Let's just switch it back to Adobe RGB. It comes with this thing called Gamut Duo, and it enables you to split the screen in half and look at the same picture, one in a standard RGB color space and one in your Adobe RGB color space. I mean, that comes in really handy if you want to compare what your images are gonna look like in print to what they may look like on screen. It also comes with this thing called advanced black and white mode. So if you are really into creating black and white images, you can actually view the whole screen in its black and white modes. And that would really help you out, especially if you are just into doing black and white prints. It also comes with this feature called paper color sync technology. So this is specifically for people who print their own pictures at home or obviously in their studio or wherever. So what it can do is it can give you very accurate on-screen results before you've actually printed it. So it takes into account the paper that you're going to print on, the printer and all of these kind of things, and it gives you as accurate as it can a screen version. Now that, it comes in really handy. If you've ever printed um, for yourself, you know that there's a lot of wastage actually. You print off a few test prints first. Well, this paper color sync technology is supposed to help reduce that. Now, me personally, I send my stuff off to print externally, so it goes to an external print lab. So if, but if you do it yourself and you've got any experience that you can share with our audience, please put it in the comments of this video. I'm sure they would appreciate it. BenQ have got this technology that they call Aquila, all right? I think I've said that right. I probably said it totally wrong, all right? And basically what they are saying is it's all to do with accurate colors and pin sharp imagery. Now, what I can tell you from my experience and my little play of it is that it is certainly pin sharp. My God, the imagery when you view it on here is stunning. Um, and the color accuracy is great across all of our monitors in here. This comes calibrated straight out of the box and we've just been using it straight out of the box as a matter of fact. Now, BenQ have also not ignored the video editor in this model here. And I got really excited about that because obviously this is what we do. We do photography and videos, it's as simple as that. Now they've added this thing called HDR technology for video editing. The fact is that that actually doesn't affect us because we don't film in HDR. That kind of technology is for like high-end film productions. You know, when you get them dramatic skies or them sci-fi films, they use it all the time, all right? Now, them types of monitors that do HDR technology for video editing are normally thousands and thousands of pounds. So even though this is 1600 quid, it's quite a low cost option for video editors that are doing that type of editing or looking to do it in the future. Now, having said that, this is actually still a really good monitor for video editing. We've been, we've been editing videos on it. It's been absolutely fantastic. And it's because of the sheer size of it. So we've got um, 27 inch 4K monitors that we have been editing on and, and they're great as well. But when you then use the 32 inch one, 
obviously like this one here, it makes video editing a, a lot easier. You know, like you can see, like if you know what video editing, you know that you work in several windows at once. Well, the bigger them windows are, the easier it is for you to edit and, you know, see mistakes. So even though we don't use this HDR video technology, I really do think this is still a great monitor for video editing. Another thing this has got is loads of ports to plug stuff into, all right? It's got a USB-C port with a 60 watt output. So you can power stuff off of this and you can actually calibrate this screen with just one cord, which comes in handy and as well as all the other ports that it's gone, got on here. And if you do actually want total specifics with the ports and stuff, there is a link in the description of this video. You can click on it, it will take you to all the specs. But as well as all of these ports, it's got an SD card reader. Now that comes in real handy, obviously for photographers and video makers, you can just plug it in and transfer your um, stuff straight from the monitor. Now, one other thing to mention here is that you will need a, a calibrator to go with it. So you, you can use the X-Rite Pro or you can use the Data Color Spider. There's two different brands that you can use to calibrate this monitor and it comes with its own monitor calibration software so that you can calibrate these monitors. So you will need one of them if you are gonna buy this monitor. Okay, so let's level with you now. So BenQ sent us this monitor. They sent us this monitor so that we can have a good play around with it and bring you this review. So here is my conclusion. At the beginning of this video, did I, I said, it, is it the ultimate photographer's monitor? It is certainly the best monitor that I have ever used for photography and video editing. If you, if you get one of these and you take it out of the box and you start looking at your pictures in Lightroom and stuff like that, you, you have that wow moment, okay? The, the matteness of that anti-glare screen, um, the colors, the resolution, I mean, it really is stunning. So I, I firstly, I'm gonna say that. So this is gonna be for people who do pro-end photography and print work. It's, I think it's also gonna be a great monitor for video editors as well. So when you put them two things together, it's absolutely suited for us here at the School of Photography. So, you know, I can't knock it. You know, these are the cons though. So we do need to speak about that. The first one is it is 1600 pounds for a monitor, 1600 pounds, right? You know, that you can get the Fuji X-T4 with a lens for roughly that price, okay? So that, that's where you've got to sit this. That's how much this is. Now, if this is your profession, you know, you earn money from it, this is your job, then maybe it might be a good investment because, um, you know, let me, let's just put it into a nutshell here. This monitor is not going to make your photography better. All right, we know that. Your knowledge of photography and your creativity and your skill, it's gonna make for your photography great. And you know, you can, you can edit on any monitor as long as it's IPS and you've got it calibrated any monitor is going to do the job. But what this does do is make it easier to see mistakes. It makes it easier to get into that really fine detail that you might want to do if you're doing very high-end stuff. And obviously it's bigger. So if you are doing work that requires multi-screens like video editing or whatever, you're going to be seeing more of your pictures. But another con here, and this is something again that you need to know about, is if not just the, the sheer size of it, it's very heavy as well. I mean, this is a beast of a monitor. So if you are looking for something that's small and thin and you know, to sit in a small office or whatever you're doing, this may not be the one for you because this is a bit of a beast of a monitor. Now, I am going to add links to this product in the description of this video. So if you do wanna look further into this monitor, there is gonna be links in the description of this video and it will take you to um, a page which will have full specs of this monitor so you can look into it a bit more. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Is it the ultimate photographer's monitor at this moment in time? I'm gonna say yes, all right? I'm gonna say yes. I'm putting my neck on the line, all right? If you think I'm wrong, 
you know, put it in the comments. Although it is 1600, so I know people are going to go, ah, oh, it's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, it, it is expensive, but I'm telling you my opinion there, okay? So again, I hope you've liked it. Click on the links to go to the full specs and have a bit more information. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, learn more at the School of Photography.